Hello, welcome back to a new video, now about lighting. Lighting is one of the most important aspects of a film production. If you don't have enough light on set when filming, you will probably end up with a lot of horrible footage, just like what you see here now. I upload some DSLR test videos and people comment that I don't know how to achieve the same look. But by combining some really good lighting and some nice camera compositions, you will get much more value out of your camera. So, how do you do this and how much will it cost? Let's try step by step to make this shot from this one. Let's figure it out. Yes, let's get it, comrade. Yeah. Yeah, it's the best or that. Okay, what for that? I'm going to film it. So fix it. Can you film it with me? Yeah. Why can't you stand back camera for one second? Because I thought you liked to be filmed. Yeah, I'm going to try a little other thing. Can you speak English? English? Can you be a model? Du er seriøst, kan ikke du stå der for en... Jeg skal ikke være sånn, kan ikke du bare stå her, jeg skal bare filme seg. Nei, jeg gidder ikke. Du er seriøst! Du er fuck deg, jeg gidder ikke! Jeg skal ikke gå! Så, for denne prosjektet, du må ha en floor-lamp. En slags tripod. En slags aluminiumpapir. En tape. Og et vindu. Så, la oss starte med å sette den rette eksposure på kamera. First, you open the aperture as much as the lens allows you. The lower the number is, the more open the aperture is, and the more light will pass through the lens. Then you should set the shutter speed to 50, since that's the standard when filming. Notice how much brighter the shot gets. Since more light passes through the lens, we can lower the ISO to avoid too much noise in the picture. The lower the ISO is, the less noise you get. In my opinion, you shouldn't film with more than 400 ISO. We need more light, and by using a window, we can get a lot of nice light, free of charge. Eskil is still too dark, and the background gets too much attention. Let's try to move Eskil away from the background. He then gets more light from the window, which enables us to lower the ISO even further. By zooming in, we can also make the background blurry. The larger the aperture is, the shorter depth of field you get. Since I adjusted the aperture to f4, I get a blurry background. So, let's sum up so far. We remove the curtains to get as much light as possible from our free light source, the window. And we moved away from the wall so we could focus on a skill while having a blurry background. Just by doing these simple steps, we have already made a much better shot. Now it's time to set the white balance. Since the main light is appearing from the window, I will set the white balance to cloudy or daylight. There we go. If you are picky, as me, you may notice the lamp sticking out of Eskil's head. Let's move Eskil and the camera a bit to the side. If you prefer having the background even more blurred out, we can change to a faster lens. Let's try the Canon 50mm with aperture 1.4. The larger the maximum aperture, the faster the lens is. And the faster the lens is, the shorter depth of field you get. Some prefer to use a really fast lens and make the background really blurry. But remember that this makes it harder to focus on the subject. Another trick to make the background more diffuse is to block the light from hitting it. Sometimes it's a good idea to use a blanket. But be sure to not block the light from hitting the subject. Now let's look at the light. It seems quite nice, but let's try to soften the shadow on Eskel's face. Find your tripod or whatever tall object you find and attach the aluminum paper with some tape. Try to bounce the light appearing from the window so it hits the shadow on Eskil's face. Don't bounce too much light or else the light on his face will get too flat and boring. It's nice with a little bit of shadow. Now let's put up the lamp. Place it behind Eskil and point it towards his head. It will create a nice halo around him. 
Remember to use a directional light, so we don't light up the background. So, we moved Eskil a bit to the side, closed the curtain a bit to make the background even darker. We put up a reflector to bounce the light and soften the shadow on his face, and then added a backlight to make the subject more three-dimensional. What we have created now is a setup called three-point lighting, which is typical for shooting portraits. The light from the window is the strongest hitting Eskil's face, therefore it's called key light. The bouncing light is called fill light, because it softened the shadows on the other side of his face, and the backlight is called backlight. The last thing you can do before recording is to clean up the background and add practical light. A practical light is a light source that is visible within a scene. Practicals are nice to both make the background more interesting, and it makes the light we put up more credible. So, that's an easy and cheap way to make a three-point lighting. Just try it yourself. If you want to upload your test, I can add it as a video response to this video. Just send me a message. Thanks for watching, and thanks to Eskil for joining as an actor in this film. It wasn't that bad, was it? My pleasure. Okay, that's good. So uh, I hope you liked the film and stay tuned for more films because we make a lot of them. So yeah, just stay tuned. Bye bye. Jag skulle ju inte säga att du skulle abonnera på mig också. Nej men vet vad annars jag gillar inte. Jag gillar inte. Du är skäl om det. Det betyder liksom inte. Är skäl? Jag kommer tillbaka då.